Hello, hello, boys and girls. It's your boy BQ here, and it is the return of the B-Side podcast. And I will be previewing Slammiversary coming up on July 7th from Texas, Dallas, Texas. Now, Ro and I got together, a little reunion. You know, we used to podcast on a regular basis, and we previewed this pay-per-view. Of course, technical difficulties won. The audio quality came out absolutely terrible. So I'm going to go ahead and run through this preview by myself. I hope that's cool with y'all. And I will get Ro back on when we review it. Now, you're probably used to hearing Trent and Kyle do previews, reviews. And I believe they still have that planned as well. But I'm making my return to the Impact Lounge. And coming with the B-Side podcast once again. And I will be doing my best to review Impact just as much as the Total Nonstop Impact podcast does, but it's going to be be shorter. So if you've heard my podcast in the past, I reviewed it quicker, you know, hit the strong points. Obviously, it's by myself, so there's not a lot of back and forth conversation. So for those who appreciate something a little bit shorter, that's what I'll be doing. So let's talk Slam Aversary. Slam Aversary is an exciting time every year because this is the pay-per-view that always delivers. Now, we tend to be a little indifferent on Bound for Glory by the end of the year, by the time it comes. Usually this show is just kind of a decent show. It Usually, at least the last few have been basically like an episode of Impact. Um, the last one was in New York, and that's a venue that, at the, what's it called, Hammerstein Ballroom, people do, people, fans hate this venue. <laughs> And it just didn't have a big fight feel at all for Bound for Gore last year. But Slammiversary is a pay-per-view that always delivers. They always go all out with this one. Last year's Slammiversary was phenomenal. It was a classic. I wasn't a big fan of Eddie versus Tommy Dreamer. But aside from that, the pay-per-view really kicked ass. I expect this one to blow it out the park from last year. Or at least be on par. I just I think this is going to be a great show. And obviously with Rebellion, which was a top freaking notch pay per view, you can only go up from there. I think. I think they're going to try to outdo Rebellion. So let's get into this match card. Usually a pay per view has eight matches on it. We've got seven announced. So maybe we're going to get something with the North who I absolutely love. I actually met Ethan Page uh, maybe two months ago at Glory Pro, and I let him know myself and my kids were an Impact family, so he autographed to the Impact family on the 8x10 I purchased from him. I absolutely love the North, so maybe they get involved. Maybe we get some kind of X Division match, number one contenders match, or something like that. They usually, at the last minute, have some kind of multi-person match that they announce. So we don't have TJP on the card. We don't have Ace Austin on the card. We don't have the North on the card. So let's see. Let's see if, uh, you know, obviously the Deaners are not on the card. Daisy Hit Squad's not on the card. So maybe, maybe, maybe we'll get an eighth match. So let's talk about the first one that is announced. Killer Cross versus Eddie Edwards. This is a first blood match. Now these two have had two matches so far. And... Normally, I would say this is probably the one I'm looking forward to the most because I think out of my top five wrestlers' favorites in Impact, they're they're both in there. I say top five because you know I like Moose, I like Rohit. Um, there's a few that I like, but it always seem it always seems to rotate around. But I love Cross and I love Eddie. We know that something is possibly going on with Cross. Maybe he's leaving the company. Maybe he's not. We don't know. Maybe this is the match that writes him off television out of the company. We don't know. Now, as much as I'm not a fan of 50-50 booking, these guys have wrestled twice so far. And Eddie is up 2-0. And when they had the street fight, I thought Cross was going to win that match. He was basically winning the entire match. And someone came down with a kendo stick, Sandman, or something like that. Cost Eddie the match. I mean, cost cross the match. And Eddie wins. 
so with the feud, it's like, what are they fighting over? Because is it because Cross wants to be able to beat him? Is it he's just not done with him? Because Eddie has nothing to prove here. So I don't really know the direction they're going with it. It's hard to pick a winner because you don't know the status of Cross. And it's hard to think that Eddie's, Eddie's just going to clean sweep him, much like LAX did with the OGs feud, where you kept, it kept expecting the OGs to win a match, and they didn't. So they've had, out of the two matches, uh, the first one, I don't remember too much about it. The second one, the street fight, kicked ass. Really good, hardcore match. I'm waiting for Eddie to have a big pay-per-view match. Now, a couple years ago, Slammiversary, he had the, the uh, Full Metal Mayhem with Alicia, and they took on Davey and Angelina Love. That was my favorite match on the card. Favorite match on the card. Ever since then, I feel like we just don't get that good Eddie Edwards match for whatever reason. And it's not really his fault. Last pay-per-view, he was supposed to take on Eli Drake. Eli Drake is released from the company. So they add him into a random multi-person match, and he doesn't even win the match. And then you have the match with Tommy Dreamer from last year, which I said I didn't care for, on a on a card with phenomenal matches up and down. I thought they delivered a really safe match. Now, I'm not a competitor, so who am I to say a safe match? But I just mean in comparison to everybody else on the pay-per-view, every other match where you've got legitimate blood pouring from Sammy Callahan, the match was really gimmicky and safe in my opinion. So I'm expecting this one with Eddie to be the one where he goes all out. We're finally getting Cross on a pay-per-view. He wasn't on... Rebellion. I don't recall if he was uh, at Homecoming. And then at Bound for Glory, I think he was a surprise partner, right, for Moose? Because I think Eddie's match was with Moose. And that was another one at Bound for Glory. It turned into a random tag team match, and they brought out Tommy Dreamer. I respect everything Tommy Dreamer's done in the industry, but he does nothing for me as an on screen character at this point, especially as a surprise character. I mean, surprise partner, I should say. Which he's been several times. So Cross versus Eddie, I'm not sure what to expect as far as who's going to win this thing. And it's hard to pick a winner. There's a street sweeper behind me right now, so if that's making a noise, I apologize. It's hard to pick a winner. But I'm going to say it's going to be Cross. I understand this is an opportunity to write him off TV if he is indeed being let go from the company. But I can't see him going down 0-3. And if he is let, let go, it sucks. Because this is a guy that should have had a world title run. Now, in my opinion, they threw him in there a little quick into the title picture. Which is okay. But it was a, dil- a diluted... I'm sorry, diluted is not a word. Convoluted. I don't even know if that's the right word. World title picture. Because it was featuring him, Moose, Johnny Impact... And who was the other person? Cage. And every week we kept getting some kind of version of Cage, Impact, Cross, Moose. And then it became like not really entertaining anymore in my opinion. Because we we saw it so much. I mean how many times did Cross get a a, a shot at Johnny Impact? So. This has to be a big, big moment for Cross. Even if he is leaving. He wants to go out with a bang. So this match should be excellent. I'm going to go... With a hair with Killer Cross. Sammy Callahan versus Tessa Blanchard. Intergender match. Cool when Lucha Underground did it. (laughs) Impact's doing it. So the haters have come out of the woodwork a little bit. As popular as Tessa Blanchard is. And every wrestling fan wants her at their promotion. Of course people are shooting this one down. I had Rohit Raju on the podcast. And he said, if the story's told right, you can pull off intergender wrestling. Some people don't like it. Some people hate it. My question with this match, and this could be match of the night. It really could. But my question is, what did they do with Tessa from here? Now, she initially signed a two-year contract. That's what it was rumored with the company. She'd been around a couple years almost. So... Is she trying to do everything she can? Everything she can accomplish before she's out the door? I don't know. But where do you go with Tessa from here? Because you can't put her back in the knockouts division. 
you know, after after wrestling the dudes, the the guys, you can't just put her back in the knockout division. And are you gonna have keep her keep having her wrestle guys? Which is possible. There, there's been rumors about her possibly being in the world title picture. I could see Impact do it. I could see them put the title on her. It could happen. What do you think about that? So this match here does have the possibility to be a show stealer. Here is the thing, though. Ro and I were talking about this. As I said, there was technical difficulties, so we didn't get the podcast. It, we're not getting it out. <laughs> Sammy is becoming kind of the Bray Wyatt of this thing. OVE is kind of becoming the Wyatt family of this. And I don't know how long ago the Wyatt family broke up. It kind of shows you, kind of just shows you, kind of shows you last time I watched a program. As a matter matter of fact, the last time I watched them, they were doing the uh, match versus the New Day that they ripped off from Final Deletion. So that shows you how long ago I watched. But what was the complaint with Bray Wyatt for a long time? It might still be the complaint for all I know. Was that he just did a lot of talking and never won the feud. And he dominated television. He dominated mic time. He had backstage segments. And to me, they became really boring because I was like, he's not going to win. And I think there was a missed opportunity not putting a title on Sammy Callahan. He had about three or four title shots between the world title and the X division championship. Um, no, no, not the world title. I think it was all X division uh, between cage and Swan. I really thought he should have won the title at Slammiversary. And as hot as he got, you know, don't rush it, but as hot as he got, never put a title on him. So I think the feud with Swan, I didn't enjoy it at all. Uh, and Swan is one of my favorites. When I talked about like my five favorite people, I really love Swan. But I didn't enjoy the feud at all. And the match was good. But there were some parts that were unbelievable to, be, unbelievable to me. And, of course, Sammy comes out the loser. He came out the loser versus Cage. He came out the loser versus Pentagon Jr. He won. The only one he, the only feud he won was with Eddie Edwards. Which a lot of people thought Eddie was going to get his comeuppance. But they branched off and did separate projects. Separate programs, I should say. Now, Sammy's doing killer work. Every single feud that he's in, he gives 100%. But is he just going to lose this also? I say no. I think the women are undefeated in intergender matches at Impact at the moment. I say no. I say potential, potential match of the night. But I say Sammy Callahan takes this thing home. And it's going to be really interesting to see what they do with Tessa going forward. Moose versus Rob Van Dam. Now, when Rob Van Dam was brought back to the company, short-term deal, obviously, I wasn't too jazzed, and I've said this on the couple podcasts I've done so far since I've returned. He phoned it in for TNA, admitted that he phoned it in, even had a world title run, had a good run, and now he comes back and we're... A lot of people are really excited about it. And, and and I will say that I have enjoyed what he's been doing. I didn't like the match with Tommy Dreamer at all. But I liked the six man when he teamed up with uh, Sabu and it was against Moose in the North. Now that one, I really liked. But the match with Dreamer, I didn't care for. But he's so, showing that he can still go. The crowd enjoys seeing him out there. I thought surely Impact Wrestling was going to be Impact Wrestling and, and, and somehow put him in a world title scene right away. Which they haven't done. So it, it's a possibility they could. I think Moose right now is the one I'm really enjoying on Impact the most out of everybody. His character work. And last year he was in the main event challenging for the world title. And this was a main event that people did not want to see. If you remember. Moose versus Austin Aries. People did not want to see this match in the main event. And it was forced. The way they put it together was incredibly forced they created heat between him and Aries that really really didn't exist but they they pushed it on us but then the build to the match was great it was all backstage segments we'd even see moose in the ring for anything until the very last they had a uh, standoff 
But these guys didn't even wrestle up to that point. It was all video packages and everything. And I really liked that. Because you're not overexposing your champion. And that's that's what's good about Cage. There's not a good thing about him being hurt. But he's not overexposing the ring. But let's get back to Moose versus RVD. Moose, if there's one thing about him at a pay-per-view, he always, always delivers. Always. That match with Aries last year was phenomenal. But Moose is one of those guys. He's a pay-per-view guy. He's going to do some stuff he doesn't normally do. He's going to have an elaborate entrance and, and his his ring gear. He, t- he treats every pay-per-view seriously. And he's called this already, him and Sammy Callahan, this, this would be the pay-per-view of the year. I think Rebellion's been the pay-per-view of the year. And I like Double or Nothing a lot. But I think Rebellion has been the best. I think Moose wins this one. Moose needs to win this one. There's no reason for RVD to win. And this probably could further further Moose's gimmick a little bo- little more to win this match. Now he broke off with the North. Is the North going to get involved? I don't know if he he legitimately just broke off with them, or or maybe maybe there's still connection there. Uh, a couple of weeks ago on Impact, they were seen around each other again after he kind of kicked them to the curb. So there be a, there could be a reason they left off the pay per view. But I do expect this match to deliver because I trust 100% that Moose will deliver. And I think Moose is legitimately hilarious right now with everything he does. But what I was saying about last year, no one wanted this paper, this uh, match, the main event, the pay-per-view. The match was great. It leads to his heel turn. And boom, Moose takes off from there. Moose is killing it. This match will kill it because I trust in Moose. Sue Young versus Havoc versus Rosemary versus the Knockouts champion, Taya Valkyrie. Whoever wins this match, I think we're going to continue to see some iterations of this match for the weeks to come. This 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 isn't over as far as these two interacting with these four interacting with each other. And what I don't I don't like multi women matches in the knockouts because Say Taya wins this match. Like, who is she going to move on against? She's not going to move on against Tessa Blanchard. She's not going to move against move on against my favorite knockout, Alicia Edwards, because she's not she's not booked to be a contender. She's already beaten Jordan Grace several times. She could get into a program with probably not Kira Hogan, but probably with Madison Rain. Madison Rain doesn't lose, so she's always in that world title picture. So this is a Monsters Ball match. And I was a little confused because Father James Mitchell, he invited everybody to this match, including his two girls. And it almost seems like he made the match. Like he made the match for the Knockouts Championship. Like the delivery of this was all wrong on the show. But I think that Ataya, who looks phenomenal right now, by the way, as far as just her physique, and she's really come into her own with this with this gimmick here compared to the the other one. And at first when she came out with the new music, I hated it, but now I love it. So she's doing a really good job as a knockouts champion. I think she's going to win this thing. I would have said Sue Young would have won it. And Havoc could, kind of be, Havoc could kind of be that henchman, for lack of better terms, lackey, bodyguard, whatever. But Father James Mitchell also said that he will ensure that Jessica Havoc is the next knockouts champion. So he completely eliminated Sue from that. So I can't see Sue winning the match. Just because of how that promo was delivered. And I think Rosemary's going to chase a little bit longer. As she continues to get back in ring shape. I think she's going to continue to chase. So this should be one of the more entertaining matches. Because last time we had a Monsters Ball match with the ladies. It was Rosemary and Jade. Tore the roof off. And maybe there's been one since then. Um, didn't Taya and maybe Taya and Rosemary had one? Because there was the red wedding match they were supposed to have. We, we don't even know what the rules were going to be for that. And then I think they did have a Monsters Ball. No, it had Demon demon Dance, but it was like the same as a Monsters Ball, basically. So when the ladies get this kind of match, they usually they usually go all out. So I'm looking forward to see what happens here. Sue and Young, are, Sue Young and Havoc are obviously going to team together. Ty has been kind of teaming with Rosemary. I don't know if they're trying to get some of that magic back they had with, with Allie. You know, because Rosemary was kind of a heel and, you know, started transitioning. So I don't think Ty is... 
transitioning to the face role because you still got Johnny Bravo and Johnny Impact there, and they're all you know obviously obvious little heel faction there. But I'm gonna say Taya walks out the champion here. Rich Swan versus Johnny Impact. This is the most high profile X Division match we've had because Johnny Impact is a main eventer. He's the former world champion. And the the only thing with this, I just found it a little funny how he is kind of settling. I don't say settling, but he's content with challenging for the X Division championship after losing his title. Now, sometimes Impact, they've always, you know, rematch clause, no rematch clause, whatever. But how many times did Taya and Tessa Blanchard go? Tessa Blanchard had several rematches trying to regain the title. LAX had several rematches trying to regain the titles from the Lucha Brothers. Brian Cage had numerous shots. Killer Cross, who wasn't even a champion, had numerous opportunities. Johnny Impact loses the title and he gets thrown into a number one contenders match with Pentagon Jr. and Michael Elgin. And now he's content going for the X Division Championship. So, so from a storytelling standpoint, I don't, I don't get that. But we know the way Johnny Impact wrestles. He has that X Division style. His opponents are never in from the X Division. He was supposed to be in the, in the opening match last year, but remember Rich, or he was in the opening match, but Rich Swan got hurt. So these guys would have wrestled back then, and Petey Williams got into it. So it was a four man match with Phoenix. Really cool match, but aside from that, we don't really see Johnny Impact in an X Division environment. And in this case, we will. I like him a lot more as a heel. I loved uh, the other day. In the, in the backstage segment, like his backstage segment saying, Bravo, hold up the X. Like he did it a couple times, making sure he holds up the X to the camera. That's the kind of humor I dig. That's hilarious to me. It's just real quick and just stupid humor, you know, but, but it's not corny in my opinion. Rich Swan, I think, has been the perfect X Division champion because he's got a little character to him. He's been involved in storylines. He has the X Division style. He's got a little name value. I think he's been an excellent X Division champion, but I think the reign ends here because I don't know where he goes from here. I say Johnny Impact wins this thing, takes the X Division title to new heights, and him and Ty will be champions together again. LAX versus the Rascals. And by the way, that's another match, Swan versus Impact, that could be a match of the night candidate. LAX versus the Rascals. This is this is another one, another match of the night candidate. As I'm speaking to you right now, we don't know which two of the Rascals are going to continue, or I'm sorry, compete in this match. If I had to take a guess, now if you remember, the Rascals thought they won the tag team championships because Trey got involved and he wasn't even the legal man in the match. I actually think something really similar to that is going to play out again, but I think they're going to lose because of it. I think LAX is going to pin the wrong person or something like that because I think this feud is going to keep going. Now this whole card here, usually at a pay-per-view, you like to build up to these matches and then, you know, that's the blow off. This whole entire card, with the exception of Cross versus Eddie, there's no way they go at it again after this. With the exception of that, um, and maybe the exception of Moose versus RVD, these feuds aren't over. We're gonna we're gonna keep seeing them going forward. I am, you, I'm almost positive. I'm about 99% positive that those matches we're gonna see some kind of version of them going forward. So, the winners losers of these matches aren't gonna mean a whole lot because they're not gonna be blown off yet. So I think this LAX versus Rascals, I've said I, I don't like the Rascals gimmick at all. I know a lot of people enjoy it, find it funny. I have never um, never used any recreational drugs, so I can't relate to the gimmick whatsoever. But for me, I don't like it. But as far as the three competitors, love what they do in the ring. One of the best tag teams in the world, in my opinion, as, as are LAX. So to me, for me, this is going to be the match of the night. LAX versus the Rascals. But if I had to make a kind of a bold prediction in it, I think LAX wins, but they're going to pin whoever's not in the match. And then they're going to branch off from there. So we'll see if I call this one or not, but I feel pretty good about that one. I think with the, with the, with Rascals challenging for the titles, it's no offense to them, but 
I think it's kind of a step down. I mean, how can you not be after facing the Lucha Brothers in so many matches? And I talked about this on the Impact Lounge YouTube channel in an upload is that the problem is that LAX is always has always beaten everybody and they beat them quickly. They, I mean, it's even part of the the promos right now when they're in the clubhouse, like, oh, we're four time champions, we beat this and this and this and this and this. Like that's that's true, but it also causes them to be a little stale at times, in my opinion, because it's just, there's not much new that they can do, is what I mean. LAX is not stale; they're amazing. But there's not much they can do because they keep beating everybody. I think they're going to win here too, but it's exactly what I said. I think they're going to pin someone who's not in the match. We don't know LAX's status with Impact going forward after this. I wouldn't be surprised if they were gone because there's nothing left that they can do. And I don't know who else they would have a program with at this juncture. Until you build the Desi Hit Squad up a little bit better. Until you build the Deaners up. I'm trying to think whatever tag, other tag teams are out there to kind of slip in my mind at the moment. I, I really think they have something of value with the North that they could do. I think they already had a match against them, which, ugh. I, I wish that they didn't. I wish that the North was just building, 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 and then come bound for glory. We get a LAX in the North like that. That's the biggest match in the tag team division they can do, in my opinion. But that's not where they're going with it. So they're going LAX versus the Rascals. Main event, main event, main event. Brian Cage versus... Michael Elgin. So we don't know Brian Cage's physical health. We get a lot of medical updates, but they're not even really medical updates. They're just kind of him him cutting promos for the most part. I don't know what to expect out of the match because we haven't seen these two mix it up at all. Now, this is the match out of all of them that it's really hard to call. What are they going to do? Does Brian Cage lose the championship after just winning it? Is he going to go right back to Back to chasing it after chasing it forever for chasing uh, chasing Johnny Impact forever. It's hard to see that. It's hard to picture that. Is Michael Elgin going to get a pay-per-view loss right away? Michael Elgin has been the best heel on Impact. One of the best heels in wrestling, I'm sure, since coming back. There's one thing, though. He keeps talking about putting people in the hospital. Like He hasn't really put anyone in the hospital. I think... I think they said he put Pentagon in the hospital and then Brian Cage was already hurt. Um, he's numerous times said he's going to put Willie Mack in there and that hasn't happened. Didn't put Rich Swan in there. So I, I like the gimmick where he's like, I'm going to put you in the hospital, but, but put someone in the hospital. You know what I mean? And the go home show is this week. Like hopefully he does do that. I don't know. But Big Mike looks like a million bucks right now. The promos are good. The wrestling's good. Like like he is delivering. He is whatever they're paying this dude, he he's he's worth it. Now at least I like that when he came into the company, they said, Well, he was in New Japan, he didn't want to wait in line, he wanted to come and move to the front of the line for the for the title. At least they put that out there, as opposed to him just being the long list of impact or TNA guys who debut in the company and then challenge for the title right away. That's what it felt like. And if we didn't have a history of seeing that, then this would be more impactful in that sense. But I'm, I'm glad they're at least telling that story that, hey, like I don't want to wait in line anymore. I'm not here to just wrestle people. I'm here to be the champion. So this this feud here is going to be a good, a good uh, feud as far as some genuine, like they're really going to show that there's some heat in this, in this feud. Because that's a good thing about them not wrestling yet on TV. Everything that they're going to do is going to be new to us on Impact Television. I think there's going to be a lot of heat. And they did a really good job with Austin Aries and Johnny Impact with the heat in that. Because that was another one that they they kind of forced. And they kind of forced the heat. But by the time the pay-per-view came around, because there was the... Um, I still don't even know if it was a work or a shoot. But at the Hall of Fame when you know they, they got into it. Because of that, there was an a, a incredible amount of heat in the main event. Bound for glory. So I expect this one to be a real, you know, have that real big fight feel. The crowd really being into it. And this is one that, damn, like, you almost wanted to have a non-finish. But then you don't want to go off the air with a non-finish, especially the world title. But who the hell is going to win this match? I'm going to, um, God, I'm just going to go with Brian Cage. But I could see Michael Elgin winning. I have no idea who it's going to be. None whatsoever. But these seven matches, 
impressive looking card. This is going to be as good as Rebellion. We'll see. I think it's got an opportunity to be, or at least to be on par with it. I think especially since AEW just had Fighter Fest, which was a good show. It, it mainly had three really good matches, a couple that were eh, and then some decent ones. But it is a company that people buzz about. So especially since they just had that Fighter Fest show, it would be great to see Impact really over deliver with Slammiversary and get people talking. Because like when Rebellion happened, it was so good that people were talking. Same, same with Slammiversary last year. It was so good. People were talking and people were, you know, who don't normally watch the company, they were going back and watching these pay-per-views. So that's the best way Impact's been able to build buzz is by delivering on the pay-per-view. And then people take notice. So leave your thoughts if you're watching on YouTube. Leave your thoughts about Slammiversary, what you're expecting. And thank you for listening to the return of the B-Side podcast. I am your boy, BQ. Catch you next time. Peace.